So as Renata mentioned, we're going to be looking at this idea of making thinking visible. And this has been a big part of my research um, for a number of years. And it grew out of the effort and the, the research that I did of studying teachers who were very, very adept at getting students to think, very good at developing what we would call their habits of mind or their thinking dispositions. And what I noticed when I studied these teachers was they didn't teach thinking skills. Instead, what I noticed was they had routines and structures, which they used over and over again to support their students' thinking. So we wanna talk about this idea of how do we use the thinking routines? How is it that we make the thinking actually visible? How do we take this very invisible process, a process that happens in the individual's head, and how do we begin to make it more visible? Um, the research that we've done is written about it in these two books. So 10 years ago, the first book, Making Thinking Visible, came out. We were just beginning to use these ideas in schools and in classrooms all around the world. And we wrote about that. And then recently, just this past May, we came out with a second book. And this reflects our studying over the past 10 years to understand, well, what difference does it make when teachers focus on thinking and focus on making it visible for their students. So we also shared a lot of new thinking routines in that book, but also our current research. So what we're talking about today kind of combines these two ideas together here. So as we think about thinking routines and how to use them most effectively in our, our teaching, it's useful to think about the thinking routines operating on three levels, three levels simultaneously. So on one level, the thinking routines are tools, simple tools which we use to support very specific thinking moves. On another level, they operate as structures or as scaffolds to help structure the student's discussion, to help structure their documentation, to help structure and scaffold their thinking, to support it step by step. And then the third level in which they operate is they operate as patterns of behavior. And this is why we chose to call them routines versus strategies, because over time, when teachers are using them, they become a pattern of behavior. They become ingrained in both us as teachers as well as our students. And by using thinking routines, it is the thinking that becomes routine in our students. And that is what leads to their development of those important habits of mind and thinking dispositions. So tonight we're going to look at each of these three parts, the idea of tools and then structures and then patterns and explore those in a bit more depth. 